All right, hello and welcome. So, true story, I got like 40 minutes through the stream before I realized that I hadn't pressed record. So, I'm going to start the intro all over again. I'm going to go over what we went through, and then we'll continue. Uh, we didn't get very far, but, ah oh man, we missed so much already. So, let me just go over it. So, I'm starting a Xamarin tutorial, and uh, we'll get into you know, advanced stuff in this. Uh, it'll probably mostly be intermediate, but we'll definitely get into some advanced topics. But, uh, you know, we already kind of started going through this eShop on containers, and so real quick, let's just uh, open that up. And so all I did was, you can Google eShop on containers. When we Google this, now uh, the very first thing that comes up is this GitHub for .NET Architecture. And when we click this, uh, there's two folders in here that we really care about. We have the docs and we have the source. And so docs has this ebook for you, uh, added latest Xamarin ebook. That that might change. It's just uh, the the latest commit comment, but um, that's this enterprise applications patterns using Xamarin forms. And so when we click this, we can read this ebook, and this ebook goes over, I mean, everything about you know the way they are architecting these solutions and uh, it, I mean it's a great read uh, explains everything we're gonna go over a lot of it but I absolutely recommend reading this um, so go ahead and do that you know when you get time but we'll press back we'll press back again and we'll go into source so in source you're gonna have all, all of the different uh, projects for like API gateways mobile services web etc we're going to mobile that's what we care about and so in mobile we'll have you know they, they have their images in a separate folder but we'll click on eShop on containers and that'll get us to the Xamarin forms project and they have a lot of things in here they have test runners for each one they have the unit tests uh, but we'll go into core and so in core you have your project structure and we already kind of started that we have uh, you know, models. I, I explained why I use pages versus views, and I'll, I'll explain that again in a moment. Um, but we already started on, like, the services, tiny IOC, which I'll talk about in a second, and then view models. Um, so back over to eShop on containers. <clears throat> we'll look, and they, they have those, but they have a lot more. Uh, they have views. I call mine pages, and I'll explain that in a moment. But, um, you know, so... We kind of already went into view models. Uh, in view models, they have this base subdirectory. And in here, it, we're going to use all four of these. Um, but we started with extended bindable object. And that is because in view model base, uh, it extends extended bindable object. And so if you don't already have that implemented, it, it'll just be an error the entire way through. Um, so we started with extended bindable object. Uh, then we went into tiny IOC. And then we went into services before we can even start on view model base. So I'll go back and quickly go over extended bindable object. So extended bindable object, you can, you know, you can pretty much copy and paste this, but it's definitely best to just type it because you'll, you, you know, a lot more will stick. Uh, but they have this raised property changed, and it, it calls the on property changed for the bindable object, but it, it uses a lookup that um, when you pass it, uh, I'll show you here in a second, but when you call this, you can just, um, you know, use a anonymous function with Lambda, and you can put the property, property name, and it'll just look up the property, and it'll send it. Um, I add another method here that you can just pass the property name, pretty much identical to calling on property changed, except you get to keep raise property changed so you'll have two options on how you're going to call this. And so I'll show you kind of what I what I do there. So we'll go to view models, view model base, extended bindable object. And I it's a very simple addition, raise property change, give it the property name. And then you just call on property change with that property name. And so real quick, just to go over what I had here. So if you have a property and it's a string title, for example, uh, you know, 
you, you have to implement the getters and setters because you're going to call raise property change. This will be in your other view models. So when you say get, and you can just say title, and I use an underscore because it's a class variable. Alt enter to create that variable. And then we say set, you can say title equals value, and then raise property change. Raise property change. And so we have two options because of the extra method we implemented, but the first one that raised property changed with the expression, the way you would call that is this anonymous function, uh, use lambda, and then just do the, the property name, right? And so that'll call this this first one. So that's this one. Uh, the reason I add that second one is because then we can just say name of title. And really, this is identical. Whoops, hold on. We've forgot a closing parenthesis. This is identical to causing on property change for that same thing, but adding that extra implementation let, gives you options on this raise property change. So it, it's up to you how you want to use it. So that's what I do. So I do the exact same thing they have here, except I add that one other method. And so we got through that. Then we started getting into services. And so the services... Let's go back to the, the core project, services, and so just a real quick recap on what that was. So each of these have an interface and an implementation. So if we go to dialog, for example, dialog has an interface and an implementation. You know, we, whoops, we can go back to navigation, and it's essentially the same thing, interface implementation. All of these services have this. And so the benefit of that is you the view model locator uses tiny IOC, which we'll get into. And so the view model locator will handle your services for you. It, it'll register all of them as singletons. And so when you are in the app and you're using these services, uh, you can use the actual services that are going to make the network calls or, you know, the dialogue service doesn't make network calls. It just shows the dialogue. Uh, but when you have like unit tests, you can register mock services, and uh, because you don't really, you're not really testing how the services are behaving, you're testing how your view models are be behaving, and so you don't have like app dot current dot main page, because app would be null from a unit test because it's not actually instantiating the you know compiling the entire app, so that's the benefit there, and so we just briefly started on dialogue service get to that in a moment first we're going to start with tiny ioc and so basically tiny ioc is an inversion of control and it uh, gives you a container that you can register your services and your view models and it'll handle your dependency injection for you incredibly powerful we're not going to use the actual tiny ioc they have here though we'll google github Tiny IOC and this grumpy dev, this is who makes Tiny IOC. We can, we can click their GitHub project, we can go to source, we can go to Tiny IOC, and we'll use tinyioc.cs. <clears throat> you can copy this entire thing from top to bottom, copy it. I know I said typing it out helps, but uh, this is like the wheel in the proverbial. You know, why reinvent the wheel? So, you know, this is great to learn. I'll be honest with you. I haven't learned exactly how this works, but I have been using it for a while, and I'll tell you, it just it's incredibly powerful. So go ahead and grab the whole thing. Go into your project. <clears throat> On the project level, make a subfolder for tiny IOC. Make a uh, C-sharp file for tiny IOC and just paste it in here. Once you paste it in here, th this will be commented. And so what you're going to want to do is just uncomment this line if you want to target PCL. That is what we're doing. So go ahead and uncomment this defined portable. Then you can save that and you can close it. And we're done with Tiny IOC. We'll use it a lot, but we don't have to really focus on how it works. It's definitely important to learn. Uh, it's definitely on my to-do list, but uh, for the for the purpose of this, we just need it in our project and we need to use it. 
So we have tiny IOC in here. We have view model, well, in view models under base, we have extended bindable object. And then we started on the services. We made a subdirectory for dialog and we were working on dialog service. It's a very good chance you're going to have to pause and catch up and do all this. I'm so sorry. This was like 40 minutes of, you know, going over how to implement this. I wasn't recording any of it. So rookie mistake. Won't make that mistake again. But moving forward. So just to go over what we just did in iDialog service. In this project, we can close this tab now. We don't need it. Uh, in this project, we'll go to services dialog and we'll look at iDialog service and they have the, just this one task show alert async uh, that's great but it's only one we want two we want to be able to show a dialog and it you know give us the option of yes and no if they say okay or if they say cancel or however we want it and so that's basically all we did so we did the I call it display alert call it whatever you'd like we can even make these async uh, it's actually it, it makes sense to do async so we'll call both of them async, but I have display alert async. I'll give it a title, a message, and just whatever the accept is, or you can call this dismiss or whatever you'd like. And this will be like OK or, you know, whatever you want that button to read. But then task bool, you know, it returns a boolean. And this will be string message, the accept and the decline. And so that's where we got when I finally realized, oh, I, you know, I haven't been recording. So I wanted to go over it. Again, I apologize that we went over all of that so fast, but you know, pause, leave a comment, do whatever. I'll, I'll make another video to go over just this, what we've done if needed. But um, if you can pause and catch up and get to here, uh, we can go from here. So we have our two dialogue service display alerts. Uh, we want we want the display alert where they can just say OK or dismiss or whatever. And then we want the display alert that says yes, no, and gives them the options. And we want to retrieve those options so that we can act accordingly. So we have the imp interface. We need an implementation. We need to implement these two methods. So we'll say add on the dialog. We'll say add class. And this will be the actual dialog service. And so this is our uh, implementation of the interface. And so to implement an interface, simply use a colon, I dialog service. So it's going to say you haven't implemented the interface. So we'll alt enter and it will make us implement the interface. So we can use what they have here. And so basically all they're saying is oh, they use user dialogs. We don't need to use user dialogs. So um, user dialogs are fine. It's, a, it's an entire new dependency that I don't think we really need. Let's, let's do it ourselves for now. Um, so what we're going to say is we're going to say return app.current.mainpage.displayalert. And so the reason I'm not using user dialogs is because I, I mean, it's a great library, but eventually we want to be able to override the look and feel of the dialogues and uh, have them display from the native projects because then we can use like UI alert view controller or we can use alert dialog builder on Android and we can present the dialogues how we want them to look and feel. So for now, we'll just use app.current.mainpage.displayalert which returns a task that can be awaited later and we'll give it just the title the message and for cancel we'll call it accept that's that seems uh we sh let's let's go ahead and change that to dismiss so in the interface we'll call it dismiss you don't have, have to, to but, but we, we should, should. And, and then, then in, in the implementation, implementation we'll call it dismiss so control r r to dismiss and the reason is because accept to fill in for cancel doesn't make much sense, but dismiss to fill in for cancel, it's a little bit better. And then on our other implementation, we'll do return app.current.mainpage.displayalert, and we'll give it the title, the message, the accept, 
and the cancel. Nope, decline we called it, which is fine. And so this will allow us to await that alert that pops up. And if the user says OK, we'll get true. And if they say no thanks, we'll get false. And that's all we need. So we'll go ahead and save all that. Dialog service is done. So we can go ahead and close that out. And now we need our navigation service. So we'll add class. We'll click interface. <clears throat> and we will call this I navigation service. Okay, so this is going to be a public interface. And I navigation service kind of has a lot going on. It's a lot more than uh, dialog service. And so what they have on the eShop on containers is they've got view model base, previous page view model. I don't think we're ever going to really use this. We have initialize async, which... Uh, so it gets used in app.xaml.cs as, you know, like, you know, if it's not UWP, then let's initialize it right away. Otherwise, let's initialize it in a little bit. Um, we're still going to implement this method, but uh, it's, it's, if we're not focusing on UWP, it's, it's not as important. But we're going to implement it anyway. Anyway, then we have task navigate to async. Another task navigate to async, a remove last from backstack, and a remove the entire backstack. We also need a way to go back, uh, like pop async, or something like that. <clears throat> and I think that's okay. You know, we might, if, if you're going to implement this architecture or this pattern in uh, like an existing project that doesn't already do this then we're going to need even another method that will allow us to navigate to async and it'll not take this view model it'll actually just take the page and so we're going to need that as well but for now let's go ahead and i'm going to move this over and we'll 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 just take the entire uh interface and then we'll add those couple methods we talked about so we'll need a view model base which we don't actually have yet. Let's go ahead and make that real quick. We're not going to implement it. We are, but not right now. So we'll just make a view model base. It's going to go in the, the view models base in, in that subdirectory. So this will be class view model base. And we'll leave it. Well, we got to make it public. <clears throat> Let's make it public. And we'll leave it. We're going to come back to this. I think almost next, actually. But so we need a view model base. Our view models dot base dot view model base is fine, and we'll call this what they called it. So previous uh, page view model, and that's a get and set. Uh oh, something happened. Get and set. <clears throat> nope, they just used get. So it. it that's okay. It's fine. All right. And then after that, we need a task. We'll alt enter to import system.threading and we'll do uh, initialize async. And then we need a task navigate to async. And this will take a T view model. object and this is like a, a parameter is what they call it or it's <clears throat> excuse me or like a, a nav object or whatever but this is this is fine we can just use parameter uh, it's it's important to say where t view model extends view model base at this point it's probably best if we just import view models dot base but it's okay Anyway, so we want task navigate to async again. And this one, oh, it's just the empty one. So where you don't pass it a parameter, but still where t 
tviewmodel extends viewmodels.base.viewmodelbase. And what else do they have? They have a remove last from back stack. So that's kind of like if you were to you know, navigate to async, you can just pop that back, that previous view controller <coughs> or view model or view, I guess. But anyway, task remove last from back stack. async and that doesn't need a prem any kind of arguments and task remove all of back stack so remove back stack async okay we also need task uh we can say go back um navigate to async so the you know the opposite of that is uh, uh yeah we'll just say go back async all right and what else would we need it's probably good, I think. We're going to add later if we need. All right, so let's go ahead. Whoa. All right, that's fine. So now we can go into services, navigation, and we can implement the actual service. So this is navigation service. We can get rid of that tiny IOC. I promised we were done with it. We are. Public. And we can implement that interface, iNavigation Service. It's going to say you need to actually implement it, so we'll Alt Enter and implement interface. And we have kind of a lot to work, a lot of work to do. Uh, we're mainly going to copy what they already have on here. So we'll go to Navigation and we'll click Navigation Service, and we'll just start getting through it. So what they have here is on the getter for this previous. Oh, let me move the let me move it over and go over it together so what they have here is on the previous page view model they're saying main page is application at current main main page as custom navigation view so we need to make this um, that's basically all they're saying is like if you're using custom navigation view let's use view model base or you know view model locator um, but anyway so then you can say you know var view model go ahead and give me the binding context and then that's what I'm going to return. So let's go ahead and do that. I've been using this for a while and I'm, I'm going to tell you I've probably never used previous page view model, but no problem. I think that's if you want to call like initialize async on your own again. But so we just want the getter and we're going to say var main page well, we should say if it is. We shouldn't just assume. So if app.current.mainpage is, and so we don't have custom navigation yet. So custom navigation page, and we'll call it uh, nav page. So if it is this nav page, let's go ahead and make this real quick. So um, in pages, add new item. All oh, right, so I told you why I was why I prefer pages over views, but I didn't tell you actually why. And so the reason is because so you have your your folder which would be called views, and you would put like pages in there. The problem is I, you know, when you do content page, you get page.xaml. If you do content view, you get view.xaml. And I like to make a lot of custom views, and so. I would put my content views in views and I would put my content pages in pages. And so that's why I call this pages and eventually we'll have views. Might even call it custom views. But so in here we'll do content page. It's actually going to be a navigation page. And that's going to get a little bit tricky until we rebuild, but it's fine. So for now we'll just say custom navigation page. going to get a little messy because custom navigation page is not a content page it's a navigation page so we'll say navigation page but now we got this huge problem so we can get rid of content we don't need content now we have this huge problem though the code behind on this page is still a content page so we're going to change this to a navigation page not that navigation page we'll save 
And we also want another constructor to handle when you give it a root, so custom navigation page, and this will be page root. And we just want to give this to the parent. Okay. And so basically the only reason why we have this custom navigation page, we're not even going to do anything custom to it, but then our navigation service can say, hey, is is, is your app.current.main page a custom navigation page? And if it is, okay, I can act. And if it's not, then I'll, I'll just kind of let it go. So there's our custom navigation page. We'll go back to navigation service and we'll import that namespace. And so now we now we have custom navigation page. It works. So if the main page is this custom navigation page, nav page, then we'll say, you know, your var view model equals nav page dot we want the navigation dot navigation stack and we'll say I guess we're doing this nav page again dot navigation dot navigation stack again uh, dot count minus two we don't even know if it has that so uh, we're going to check so if uh, nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack dot count is greater than two and so let's say it, the only way that passes is if it's three or more and so we say it so maybe we need greater than or equal to two because so navigation stack dot count let's say it is two so if we minus two we go to zero and we get the first element so that works if we were to say my you know just greater than two it'd have to be three or more and if we say it's three, but we do minus two, then we get the second element because it lands on one. So here we go. So if it is, the reason why we have this uh, this error is because um, we're assigning a variable. And so if, if you don't have the curly braces and you assign a variable, you can't use that variable. So uh, var view model equals give me all that. And that's because navigation stack dot count is greater than or equal to two so we'll say the far view model equals you know that the one right behind the current one and then we'll say return this view model whoops view model as a view model base okay and then if none of this is actually true we're just going to return null and the reason for that is because um, later, we, if we want to check if previous page view model is null, it doesn't mean there isn't a page before this, but it means that we don't have this custom navigation page, and that custom navigation page doesn't have two or more, uh, you know, pages in its navigation stack. So that one's fine. A little bit different than how they implemented it, but that's how we're going to do it. All right. So the go back async. So go back async, they don't have imp implemented, so we will just do it. And so again, we want to see if uh, this, you know, app.current.main page is a custom navigation page. So if app.current.main page is custom navigation page, nav page. So if it is, then uh, mm, I think nav page.can, nope. Navigation.can, nope. Uh, so we want to say if it's navigation stack dot count is greater than or equal to one. That's not true. Two. Can't go back if you only have one. Then that's all it is. But if it is two, then we can say nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack. No, no. We don't need navigation stack. We can say navigation dot pop async. And we can return it. No, we don't need to. So we're not returning. They can just await that. Um, funny, because we don't have to return anything. Uh, otherwise, we'll just say return. No. No. Task dot from result. No. 
zero. I don't think we can return this. Hmm. And it returns the page. Interesting. I wonder if we should do that, if we should keep it. We might as well, right? Page. I don't know why not. And then return null. And so we could like try to pop back, and if it doesn't work, we'll just have null. But if it does work, we'll have the page that we popped. I like that. So let's go back into iNavigation service and make this return a page. Not pages. Okay. So that returns page now. I don't hate that. I actually like that. Oh, man. I didn't mean to click that. Let me try to cancel this build. See how long it takes. That was pretty quick. Okay, so navigation service can go back. That's good. Initialize async. This is where some of the magic happens. So we'll find it on... Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. So basically what this does, if you have a login page, which we, we, we actually don't right now, so initialize async isn't going to really do anything <coughs> for now. But, so if you have a login page, then it's pretty much going to check your current access token and validate it. If it is valid, go to like home page, go to home page. If it is not valid, then it would go to the login page. So that's great. Uh, we don't really need that right now. So we'll just say return task dot from result give it just zero is fine and so if we you know invoke this and await it it's just going to be all the way fast because it doesn't do anything okay so we have navigate to async with the parameter so we'll find that one that's right there ah so they have this intern they do all of their stuff like public access but then it's controlled privately so that's fine return internal navigate to async Uh, and this will take type of T view model and null. Nope, we're going to pass the parameter. And then this one is the same thing except null. So return internal navigate to async. And I'll still take a type of, and that'll be a T view. Oh no, T view model and null. Uh, we don't need all of those. Okay, and then uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and alt enter those. We'll put it at the bottom. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put it down here. We'll implement that here in a moment. And so we have removed backstack async. Uh, it's, it's not a real big deal. And then we have remove last from backstack. So we'll do remove backstack async is fine first. So remove backstack async. So you have the var main page and then it's saying get give me the custom navigation view. I disagree. I think we should say if app.current.main page is custom navigation page nav page, then we can do stuff. So then we'll say you know they're saying if main page is not equal null we don't have to do that that's all taken care of in that line so then we'll say for int i equals zero hmm. oh i see because you can't iterate through we can't use a for each really i feel like we could it doesn't matter let's just do what they do 
for i equals zero, i is less than nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack dot count minus one and then i plus plus and in here we will get the page so far page equals nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack at at i not nine and then we will say nav page dot navigation dot remove page and it'll be the page Right. All of that will happen, and then if it's not, um, we'll, either way, actually, we'll return task dot from result, and they're actually doing true. Let's just stay consistent. So this one up top, instead of zero, we shall return true. I guess that was a different service. That's fine. Not even worried about it. All right, remove the last from backstack async. So this doesn't remove the entire backstack. <coughs> so again, if app.current.main page is custom navigation page nav page. So if that's true, Then we will nav page dot navigation dot remove page and we'll basically just grab the one before this one. So we should we should also check to make sure it exists. So let's type this first and then we'll come back and check. So nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack at index of nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack dot count minus two and so we need to make sure that even exists because if it doesn't it'll crash our app uh, there should be there definitely should be checks in here so we'll say if nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack dot count is greater than or equal to two then go ahead and remove the, whoops remove the last one Only thing I don't like about this is how many times we're invoking this navigation at navigation stack, navigation at navigation stack, navigation at navigation stack. So what I think we should do is index that. So var nav stack. No, no, no. Yeah, we do want nav stack. Equals nav page dot navigation dot navigation stack. And now instead of doing all these lookups, we can just operate on the navigation stack directly so navigation stack and navigation stack okay and I like to put I mean sometimes I get lazy but I really like to put everything in these curly braces I think with Visual Studio's dotted lines and stuff it just it makes it definitely a, a lot easier to read uh, and so outside of this we'll return task dot from result and that'll be true and that one's done and so now these internal navigate to uh, so internal navigate to yep is going to use a couple other methods that we need to implement um, these are all on the navigation service that is in github but let's go ahead and implement those first because we have to use them and we'll get errors if we don't so private type and this is the get page type for view model and this will be it'll take a type view model type alright and so in here we need to find out basically how our project is structured and so if you did it like me and you have pages then we're gonna make a change if you keep it views you can do how they do it and so we use pages so we have to change it just a little bit so var view name equals view model type nope dot full name dot replace okay so let's think about this real quick so we're trying to find the view name and so if we pass a view model its full name would be like uh, zam tutorial dot uh, view models 
dot, and then like let's say we have a home page. This would be called home page view model. And so this is our way. And so the the way that eShop on containers does it is like it would if we were to use our same project structure, Sam tutorial dot view models dot home page. It would actually be like home view model is what theirs would be. Okay, so the difference, why this is an important difference is because they're saying just replace model, replace it with nothing. And so that what that would do is uh, it would do two things. So if we replaced model <clears throat> with string.empty, we would get this. We would get Xamarin, nope, Xam tutorial dot view. It would cut out this whole model thing and just leave the S dot home view and it would cut out model again. And so that would actually, if we had views, that would get us our actual view. But we don't have that. So what we have is we need to replace view models first with pages. So we need to do this first, because then we need to replace view model with nothing. So let's do that. So view models, all of it, replace it with string.empty. No, 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 I'm so sorry, pages. Okay, and then we need to replace it again. So replace, and then we need to get rid of view model with the string.empty. And so here's what that does. So that's if that's theirs. And ours is if we do it our way. So let's just number these so it's easier. So this way is for one. And then so for two, which is our way again, we would say uh, the first thing we do is replace view models with pages. So we get like this Zam, or Zam tutorial dot view models changes to pages dot and we have this home page view model that doesn't get replaced yet. But on that second replace, it gets rid of view model by itself. And so that's this one and it leaves us with pages dot home page exactly what we want. So we're going to keep that. We'll delete all these comments because they're unnecessary and they just create clutter um, so there's that so we found our view name now we need to find the assembly so var view model assembly name equals view model type dot get type info oh, we're gonna have to import that so we have to kind of capitalize it properly type info alt enter bring in reflection dot assembly dot full name okay and then we'll say the var assembly name so view model view assembly name equals string dot format and they're using culture info culture info alt enter bring in globalization dot invariant culture and then we will use a good old fashioned string format, put zero comma one. And outside of that, we want the view name and we want the view model assembly name. Okay. And so then it's going to try to construct this view. Well, it's going to try to gain the type from the view. So var view type equals type dot get type. And we want view assembly name. And then we can return that. Return view type. So later when we go to use this method, we'll check to make sure view type's not null. Okay, so after that, we need to get this other one, which is the create page. So it'll take that type we just found. Uh, so create page. And create page is going to take two parameters. We have the type that we kind of just found in that last method. So view model type. And we have our 
object parameter. Hmm. Okay, so type uh, page type equals get type. Oh, interesting. So we're actually not getting it from the method we just called. We're calling that method from here. And so that will be the view model type. All right, and then we need, we need to check it for null. So if page type is equal to null, then this is saying go ahead and throw a new exception. We are going to do that. So we're going to throw the exception. I don't like to throw exceptions that aren't being caught, but uh, this is basically saying if you're using this navigation service, you're trying to create the page using navigate to internal, which we kind of took care of earlier. Ah, that was the other method we needed. We'll get there. I'm going to get it started, though. So real quick, we're going to digress just for a moment. We want to do a navigate to async, and we want to make it to where we can just pass a page in. So page, page, and it doesn't need to be anything else. That's just it. Navigate to async new page. So if we call this, we don't need to do all this create page stuff, and that's that's why we want to do it. So we'll say uh, public task navigate to async, and we'll take in a page, and all we're going to say here is return, uh, let's leave it blank for now, we'll come back to it. I just wanted to get it in there and it'll have an error, so we definitely have to come back to it. But, so now we have this if page type is equal to null, we can throw that new exception. Exception, and it's basically saying cannot locate page for type, no, page type for, and that was our view model type. Okay, that's fine. And then uh, that threw the exception, so that is a break. Otherwise, page page equals activator dot create instance of our page type, and that's as a page. And then we'll return that page. Okay. And so now we can go into our navigate to internal, internal navigate to async, I guess it is called. And we can do our page, page equals create page. And that'll be from type. Oh, you know what? We should, these were auto generated. This should be view model type. And this should be parameter. So now it makes a little more sense. View model type and parameter. I don't know why parameter is needed there because I, I don't recall using it down here. We didn't. We did not use it down here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that out of here then because it just doesn't seem to make too much sense. Like why does it even need to be there? So let's get rid of that. I don't know. We, we definitely want the object parameter here. But we don't necessarily need it here because we're not, we're not, even, we're not even using it. All right, let's get rid of that. It doesn't make sense. So we made our page using create page. What they're doing is saying, hey, is it a login view? Otherwise, do something else. We don't have a login view right now. So we're going to skip that and just do something else. So var navigation page. Oh, and then they're saying do that. So we're going to do our fancy little if app.current.main page is custom navigation page, nav page, then we can skip that whole if it's null thing and just say, oh wait, nav page, it's got to be asynchronous. Otherwise, you can't use await. So await nav page dot navigate to navigation dot navigate to navigation dot push async and that'll be page and then they're basically saying otherwise set 
a new custom navigation page with this as the root. So await, nope, don't need to await, app.current.mainpage equals new custom navigation page, not custom attribute, custom navigation page, geez, and page as the root. Okay, and then we can, if, in, if our page dot binding context is view model base VM, so if it is that, they do it a little bit differently, but what we're going to say is if it is that, then go ahead and uh, await VM dot, and we don't have this implemented yet, initialize a, async, and we'll give it the parameter, so parameter. So that needs to exist in view model base, and we will do that now, actually. So back to the GitHub. Let me bring this back over. So back to the GitHub. Uh, I went to the core again, and so I'm going to go to view models, view model base, and we're going to look at actual view model base. So the reason why we had to do iDialog service and iNavigation service is because we're using both of them. Um, then we have our is busy, which is fine, no big deal. But then you have this view model base, which says, okay, let's set dialog service, let's set navigation service, let's set the setting service, which we haven't implemented yet, so we're going to leave that out for now. Um, <clears throat> and then it's setting your like your basic endpoints and stuff when the view model base is first created. Not a big deal. And then it's giving you this virtual overridable method initialize async and that's what we need in order for our error to go away so let's go ahead and get started on this real quick so view model base we have here somewhere here it is and so view model base needs to extend that extended bindable object that we made okay and then in here we need an is busy and we might also use title uh, like as a page title but I think for now we're going to not because it's not in here and until we need it we're not going to just add a bunch of arbitrary parameters. So let's get started with the two services. So they have it as protected and that's great because we want all children of this view model base to be able to use dialog service and navigation service. Uh, read only because we don't need them modifying it and then we have iDialog service. And we'll call it just dialog service is fine. Alt enter to bring in the dependence or the using statement. And we'll do it again. Protected read only iNavigation service. And then we'll just call this navigation service. Alt enter. Here we go. We got our two services. They are null as of right now, but it's okay. So we'll do public bool is busy and get. And then I use an underscore because it's a class variable is busy alt enter to create that variable and then set sets is busy to value and raise property changed and I use name of is busy okay so we have that done then we'll say uh, we'll use the constructor they have here and this says, okay, let's make our dialog service something. So equals view model locator. Dang. Doesn't exist yet. All right. To be continued. Um, and then we need our uh, public virtual task initialize async. Let's alt enter to get task in here. And then initialize async. And it can take an object navigation data that they're calling it now. That's fine. Let's do it. Navigation data. And we'll just return task dot from result not from canceled. And that'll be false, I guess. No big deal. Okay, so that's fine. Um, we need our view model locator pretty bad. This is a big one. View model locator is huge. It's so important. Uh, that's where we're going to register our services. We're going to register our view models. Uh, it's going to handle all of the service instantiation, which will become singletons, and then you can just retrieve them from the locator. 
Locator uses tiny IOC for inversion of control. Incredibly important. The only bad news is we are already at 1.30. This recording is like only an hour out of like the almost two hours of the stream. Sad news, but this is probably going to be where I'm going to call it for tonight. We definitely have a lot more to do with setting up, so I'll call this setting up part one. Uh, we do need to get these services created, and for that we need view model locator. So I'm going to bring this window back over, and let's just go over what we're going to kind of get into next time. So if we go to this core project, and we go to the view models folder, We'll see this base, and in here is this view model locator. View model locator is huge. So we've got this, this auto wire view model property, and it's a static findable property that comes from you know in the static class. And what that lets us do is uh, put it as an attached property on a page. And the huge thing there is it just if you set it to true, it looks for that page's, like a view model in the view models folder that has that same uh, naming convention, and it'll just auto-rig that view model for you, and you don't have to worry about setting it in the code behind or in the XAML. It just does it. Um, so th that'll do that here. And then from here, um, you know, you get, you get to use your bindings from your view models and um, all that stuff, it's its incredible. Uh, but this one's got, you know, pretty beefy amount of code, so we'll go over this next time. <clears throat> From here, we have uh, View Model Locator, and then we get into... Uh, we don't really have to do the message keys right now. So we'll have Extended Bindable Object done, which is already done. We have View Model Base almost done. It just has a kind of a dependency on View Model Locator. View Model Locator has kind of a couple dependencies uh, mainly these view models we're not going to register any of these we're going to register our own this update dependencies thing we'll get into uh, this is super important for uh, you know when we start to use mocks um, and then this is like the reverse of the one we just did where it takes you know the the view model well it takes the view and it is going to create the view model so and then it's going to set it as the binding context very important view model locator is huge and so from there then we can start making our views we can our pages our view models we can rig them up we can cre create that loose cu loosely coupled relationship between the views and the view models um, and then we can start actually creating pretty cool stuff with xamarin so with that this is where i leave you I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, please absolutely feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, definitely comment with any questions you have. And I'll do my best to answer. And Alright, so thank you for watching and hope to see you again.